Okay, welcome to the stream. How's it going, everybody? It's going to be a mid-afternoon Sunday stream tonight. And we're going to pick up some, some uh, Final Fantasy XVI. Um, been a few days since the last time we streamed this. Made a little bit of progress on my own time. Um, not anything core story related, although there were some story events. We'll get into it as we get into it, but goddamn. Uh, a lot of side questy stuff. Now, most of the side quests in this game eh, is not so great, <laughs> but uh, a lot of the stuff I was doing on my own time, uh, a lot of it actually had a lot to do with some of the characters that we've uh, come to know over the last few streams of this game, and it's, uh, it's it was interesting. There was a couple story-related bits, nothing terribly major, I suppose, but um, yeah, it took a while. A lot of people had a lot of problems that needed fixing or something to that effect. But did benefit in a handful of ways. Uh, got some item increase, uh, item pouch increase, and uh, effectiveness of potions and something else. I forget what exactly. But uh, yeah, we're um, going to jump back right into where we left off with the main story. And there might be a couple changes to things here and there. Learn something about the game mechanics too. So that was a nice. Um, but otherwise, I think we're set. Maybe just do a couple extra hunts or something, because I know that some of the hunts drop items that can lead to some decent crafting materials. Um, so we might see some of that, but otherwise, yeah, I think we're, uh, we're getting ready. We're getting close. It's almost going to be the end of the game, and uh, don't know how long that's going to take. Still might be a while yet, but... Uh, the way things are adding up here, it certainly seemed like that's going to be sooner rather than later. But anyway, I think everything is looking good here. Nothing amiss. Mic's on. Visuals seem to be okay. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing uh, that we did last time, uh, defeated old King Barnabas, the dominant for Odin. Ended up taking his power, although Clive didn't want to willingly. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, casting some ability points in there, just because like this and the other abilities seem like they might be interesting. Possibly do some attack boosting stats, things along those lines. Uh, the finisher potentially could be pretty good. We'll see, maybe, if I get a decent amount of points. Although I have 8,000 right now. That's not bad. Uh, one thing I did notice was that if you master an ability, you could put it anywhere, regardless of whatever overriding icon you have in your three slots. So I've put some of the... Uh, I took the Garuda back. That was one of the big ones where I was kind of missing out on it, because... You know, when you have a big enemy and you stagger them halfway, get their stagger gauge halfway down, you can use the Garuda ability to kind of like drag them in and uh, give yourself some extra hits. But I wasn't able to do that. But now that I've mastered a handful of abilities, and I've figured out that you can paste them pretty much anywhere. Uh, I've got the Bahamut Giga Flare, which is the, I don't know, the final finisher for the Bahamut stuff. And uh, the Ice Age from Shiva, which... I thought was pretty good because it had a strong recovery time and still did a decent amount of damage. Uh, we still have Titan in the middle there with the same things, although I think I switched out to Upheaval just because it has a little bit better splash area of effect damage. Uh, and yeah, I think the Phoenix stuff is all the same as it was before, so I don't know. We'll see where I can possibly fit in some Odin stuff. Uh, some of the side missions I did ended up getting me some better gear, so now we have the Ouroboros and the Sons of Ouroboros, uh, which are pretty top-tier gear, so not too bad. Also, the Ragnarok, which I thought might have been the final weapon. It even exceeded the Excalibur, which I ended up making, I think. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, but quite a bit. <laughs> 325 versus 268, goddamn. Uh, there was another one I got that was even better than the Excalibur on top of that, which was the Everdark. I don't know if I was using that one on stream or not. But uh, this was supposedly some sort of ultimate weapon of some description. Uh, but the two blacksmiths that I had gotten to create the thing said they could make an even better weapon. I forget what it was called. We got the blueprints for it. Uh, but it looks like it's going to require 
some like big hunt drops as a crafting material. So we'll try to get it into that as we move along. Hopefully it's not going to take terribly long to get those, but we'll see. So far, so good, though. Like I said, a lot of the side quests had to do with... Not, maybe not all of them, or the majority of them, but there was a decent amount that had a lot to do with some of the characters that we've met, like Martha and uh, the two that were in that... Um, that sort of, like, deserty town where we had to find our merchant's pass. I forget their names. What now? Which is unfortunate because one of them died in one of the side quests, so <laughs> it wasn't great. But uh, his sacrifice will not have gone in vain, I suppose. Is there no peace for a dying man? What happened here? No. What's up, Prelaw? The ether Thanks fence. for dropping in. Made savage beasts of my companions. And those faithless orcs, I knew they weren't to be trusted. We were told that they would stay loyal to our cause. Something commanded their loyalty, but it was not us. It's a wonder they stayed faithful for so long. Perhaps they sensed our downfall. The king is gone, our nation in ruins. What becomes of us loyal pawns now? Sworn to a shattered throne. Fuck Wallard. <clears throat> Fuck the dead king and his god. <clears throat> Fuck this withered shithole. There you go. <clears throat> the floods do not affect you. You are a bearer, albeit one who's lost his brand. Pray, hear me, brother. Will you grant this pawn his final wish? Will you lay my dying soul to rest? Sure, what does that entail? Of course. What do you need? Oh, finally, some luck. Beyond the castle walls, towards stone here, there is a forest, never turn. My parents are buried upon the bluff, nestled amongst the trees. Theirs was the only love I ever knew. I was torn from them in life, but perhaps I can return to them in death. Take my ring. See that it rests beside their bones. May you find peace at last. Well, that doesn't sound too hard to carry out. Got to do some scrounging around in the up upper area up here anyway, because I think there is a hunt, a mark of sorts that I need to find. Because uh, I'm pretty much caught up on all of the marks, at least that are on the board at this very moment. And there's one in an area that I have not discovered yet, I'm pretty certain. So I'm guessing it must be up here, because it's in kind of like this Walud area. Don't tell me. The only way to the capital. is through that gate, just as you surmise. There's an army down there, Joshua. Yes, but I don't see any dominance. That's true. Dominate the shit out of them. I don't remember his name, but he will never be forgotten. Exactly. <laughs> I don't remember his name, unfortunately. I bet we can't uh, pull it up. Yeah. For the uh, time act, the lore thing there, and you can't uh, can't really pull up individual stuff. You need to go to the lore master, old man. If you wanted to do that. I was thinking about fighting these guys. I might as well. It's over. 
I might as well I'll go ahead and fight them for right now. This one has a uh, saddle on it. Oh, can't drag him with me. But I think for the most part we're gonna try to avoid the just the basic battles. Ready, go. Faster. See if I can just hit up the key stuff for right now. Um, but yeah, with the side quests, everybody had a little something to get. There, Karen had a quest. Um, the blacksmith had a quest. Uh, like I said, Martha, the two that were in that town where we needed to get the the brother and sister. We needed to get the merchant's pass back from the kids that stole it. Um, I don't think if there's anyone else. Oh, the Aladdin-looking fellow <laughs> from kind of a similar area. I think he was in the Dalmechia spot. So, plenty going on. In my mind, the way they kind of sort of feel like they wrapped up a lot of these people, especially with one of them dying and all, it uh, adheres even closer to the fact that I think we're really close to the end of the game. Not to mention just like, you know, the basic game mechanic stuff. Seems like we've done just about everything. We've gotten nearly... Or no, we've unlocked, unless there's something else, but we've unlocked all of the icon abilities. You know, Odin was the last one to fit the slot, unless there's going to be something that's kind of outlier to that. Uh, so, seems like there's Good girl. a lot of things point to the fact that we're pretty close here, but you never know. There could be like 20 hours of cutscenes left. <laughs> it's just going to lengthen the gameplay time even more. Which, hopefully that won't be the case, but... We shall see. Like I said, it would be nice to try and get a lot of the hunts done. I would just really like to see if I could get that, what I'm assuming is going to be a final weapon. You just get all the rest. Leave. There we go. Stay down. Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate the, the vote of confidence. Oh. Torgal taking care of that one. Great Southern Gate. Boy, if only I could remember what the spot was called. There was some, It looked like a curl of some sort, that last mark. So, I think it was feline in nature. Come on. But I don't remember the location of where it was at. I think it was one of those ones that kind of had a funky name. Maybe it was even one of those ones, now that I think about it, that had like some relation to the enemy. Because there was another curl type enemy that we fought and it was in a spot called the Cattery, I think. I don't know what this is. Treasure map, I guess. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. You stay back there. But aside from the side quests and the game mechanic type things, Getting all the icons. I mean, we've pretty much finished up with all the characters that we've introduced, all the main antagonists, except for Ultima, uh, have been dealt with. This is main quest related. Stay down. For a while, I was using that ice gauge move. That's what it's called. Because it does recover quickly and it does have a bit of an area of effect, but it shoots like in a line. 
and that Titan ability is a little bit better because it has somewhat more coverage. It's kind of more of a round area of effect as opposed to something that just goes in a straight line. So I switched that out for the one where he just punches a lot. Seems to oh god. Seems to have worked out so far though. Keeping up with these enemies. One right after the other, everybody's shooting something at me. Let's see this Giga Flare move. <laughs> Unfortunately, it cannot penetrate barricades. Oh well. Oh good, I thought it was like a big enemy. It's just a chocobo. No, we're not over. Can you go on? Do I have a choice? Soil and stone! Oh, one of these guys. Alright. Well, we did end up having to bigger enemies show up, I suppose. Sucks. Always the most unassuming posture when he does the fire breath. I never think he's actually gonna do something until he does it. Won't hit him with any of the heavy hitters just in case someone else decides to pop up. Looks like there is. Good, what are those? Works? Trolls? <laughs> Found one of them not too long ago. Pandemonium or something. It's a S rank mark like during the last stream. guys. Okay. I think that's all the smaller ones taken care of. for that timing. I was gonna have to get used to them falling like that.
Pretty good. 80,000 in damage. So almost dead. Not quite, but. Shit, that's a big one. Oh, no, you don't. You're getting that big move out. Right on, right on. We can rest here if you like. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Could probably use a rest, yeah. Just used up several potions, not too happy about that, but... Don't see anything as far as pickups go. Needed to step in the gates a little bit. Uh -huh. oh. Was it you? I thought I saw a pop up. You were right, boy. Maybe it was just a pet Torgal. Good. Bit of replenishment there. This looks like a door, but I can't actually go in there. It's unfortunate. Look, Clive. By the founder, the place is a fortress. <laughs> oh well. Do anything about that? So where are we now? What is this? Critten Hollow. Okay. See. All right. That's where my thinking went. The hunt is somewhere around here. Because Critten kind of sounds like Kitten. <laughs> and the boss, the mark, whatever you want to call it, is a curl of some sort, which is a feline-ish enemy. So it's around there somewhere. I don't know if that's going to end up being the last one, but... Uh, it might have what we need to get that final sword. I kind of hope it does, because I don't really want to take on any others. But... Uh, you never know, there might be an S rank. Oh, there was a real cool, uh, one of the barks was an S rank. Real cool dragon. Sort of looked like the dragon from uh, Dragon's Dogma. Had that weird, sort of like, ancient textile European dragon thing going on. Kind of. Still sort of looks a little bit more like American Western influenced, but not terribly so. Realize you can pull the chocobo out. Good girl. Still on castle grounds. You'd think that'd be illegal. All right. So I'm take a peek around here, see if there's anything worth investigating. A lich. Treasure chest over there, but. Somehow I doubt its contents are going to be all that valuable. No villages. No knights. 
Not even any bodies. One could almost believe the whole kingdom had turned to Kashek. I mean, this is an Akashic flood right here. Assuming that it's what's making the game come to a crawl. Hey, I think that's it. That might be our mark. Let's see if he gets off the chocobo, yep. Beigel, rank A. I've already beat several rank S ones, so hopefully this isn't going to be anything too major. Weird looking head. follow-up attacks. I saw that the first time around and I was like, boy, I'm lucky I didn't get hit by that. Uh, second time around, not so much. It's got a little bit more of a build-up time to it than I'm used to. Blank, get right in there. This has got a lot of defense because that only that didn't even do sixty thousand. Oh Jesus. myself enough room to recover and dodge that second time around. So you can see if we could finish it off with the Giga Flare. Hopefully. There we go. 
Nice. Alright, that was the last one on the board. Let's see what it drops. Pearl whisker and a meteorite. None of those are rare materials. Let's hope it was the last of its kind. Guess we'll find out. Thank you. Mostly had the same moves, I think. There's a couple that had an odd timing sense about it. I don't know if that's just me not used to that attack. Or if it legitimately was something that was slightly mixed up. But overall, not terrible. Could have been worse. No oh, King Barnabas. That's been the hardest fight so far. But granted, you know, they I, I died once and got a full replenishment on my items, which was nice. Um, I'm wondering if maybe if you die during one of those other segments that you, know, you get a checkpoint don't have to start at the beginning because other boss battles you do get a checkpoint after a certain amount of time. So, you know, maybe might not be so hard in the long of it, but boy. I was really using everything when it came to that one. I think this is that grave. He'll be able to see all the way to stone here. Find a resting place as any man could hope for. Reunited with those he loves at last. Clutch mine? Centuries, these strange egg shaped clusters of ore were ignored by Walud's Pikmin. Since clutch mine is brittle, dull, and of little use in its own right, but when it was later discovered that the substance could uh, be added to metals to increase their strength and hardness, it was mined to the point of exhaustion. Hmm. Here lie buried ye bodies of Knut and beloved wife Britta, who departed this life in ye 24th year of Reverie. Knut is a weird name. Boy, I wonder if I should make... I don't know. Make my way all the way to the... Goal. Or a quest marker is. and See if we can get a teleport spot over there. At the same time, I don't want to trigger a point of no return. That would suck more than anything. Blowing up? Oh yeah, it did. in order to rectify that should there be a point of no return I will just make a safe good enough a zin worm last time there was a major point of no return which was when we went after the first mother crystal with Sid they gave me an opportunity, said, hey, you know, this is going to be a big turning point in the story. Are you sure you want to continue? So I'm going to hope that they do something similar should something like that pop up. This is a fairly big area. 
Does it bother you that we haven't heard a single human sound? Everything about this place bothers me. I mean, it seems like everywhere we go, we see those little aether sparkles too, so I'm assuming that this whole place is flooded to some extent. There, uh, it's not like those gaseous fumes like when it gets real thick, but still. come before the storm there's only one way into that city across the bridge through the main gate right into the midst of whatever is left of the Lake King's army are you ready for this as ready as I'll ever be an option and walk up to the gates but let's see eh. <laughs> let me go back since it's given us the opportunity here let me go back to the hideaway covered in nicks and lumps the Lord. nicks and lumps I just want to take a look at the uh, hunt board here. What's up, Sabotage? How's it going? Oh boy, no, I think that's it. We certainly have gotten everything that's available right now. I wonder then if I have all the materials necessary to make that sword. Let me go take a look. Go check in with the blacksmith. Him and his other blacksmith buddy we brought in from Delmechia. I've got uh, him hanging around just in case I have the stuff necessary to make that sword. Go on then. Oh yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um, it has, it's not perfect. It has its faults. But I do like it quite a bit still. You'll not find a better price than that. Out of everything I played this year, I don't know that it would be like the tippy toppest of everything, but it's been pretty fun. It is a sight to behold. It is a spectacle of a game. All right. Ah, oh, shit. We need dark steel. See, I think. All right, that little icon down there. Yeah, I should have known. That is the icon for a hunt drop. So we need dark steel from something. Don't know what that what would have that. Don't know if we could like refight any of the old hunts. We need oricalcum, which unfortunately I used two of those to uh, make better gear. I don't know if it would have been better to make this thing. Daughter Damarung. <laughs> it's an interesting name. I don't know if that's based on anything. And Dark Steel and Orichalcum. I'm not sure. The Orichalcum I've gotten so far in this game. <sighs> well, let me take a look. Maybe Curtin has something. Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. Orichalcum I've gotten so far all has been via the hunt board. It's been like prizes for defeating the marks, but. Is that all? Don't think anyone would actually sell the stuff. Why is the music so intense? I wonder if that's my choosing or because I know I picked a song at random. Indomitable. I might have picked that one actually. 
heard some people really don't like it and some really love it. I haven't played it, so you were just curious. I gotcha. Uh, yeah, I could see where it would be divisive. This game is very story intensive, but the story it has is very derivative. Um, particularly towards the beginning of the game. It almost feels like it's sort of taken a different turn, because the beginning of the game it was all about warring nations and countries and, you know, backstabbing and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people made comparisons to Game of Thrones, including the devs. I know some people get upset, like, well, why are you comparing it to Game of Thrones? It's because, you know, Square Enix and a lot of the devs that were working on it, they kept bringing it up. So <laughs> there's no reason why you shouldn't compare it. But yeah, you could tell that it definitely took, uh, lifted some story backbone safe. from uh, the Game of Thrones yeah, series. And, um, you know, it's got a couple other things mixed in there, all very basic. You know, plot level stuff and nothing too extreme. Um, but at the same time, you know, the characters that you're meant to like are likable. Characters that you're meant to dislike are contemptible and, you know, and get motivations across. Um, it's very cutscene heavy, both in dialogue and like action related stuff. So a lot of times when you're doing like battles and stuff, there's a lot of like cutscenes going on. Like I said, it's a spectacle. This game is a lot about the visuals. Unfortunately, they look good, but if you're someone that's just into like story, like uh, not story, if you're just someone that's like into pure gameplay, uh, I could see where that can be a little bit frustrating because a lot of times they take that away in service of having a, you know, something cool happen on your screen. It's not the first time Square Enix has done this with the Final Fantasy series. Definitely not, but you know, some people haven't played it in ages, get back into it, and are surprised, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to take a sec here. We can look at the back of his cape for a moment. Sorry, not the most interesting visual. Maybe I can, uh, I can look off into the sunset. I just didn't want those people talking. I need to know where I could get Ori Calcum before I set off on anything like final with this game, because I think we're pretty close to the end. Hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. So it seems like, all right, they're listing off the hunts, which I've already done, which I've gotten those three. Which is why I have one left, because I needed one for each of the uh, armor materials that we got. And is that it? Uh, there's a couple that are part of the side quests, I guess. How do you split the sea? Let me see. Okay, this guy. All right, there's nothing popped up. There's got to be a point, I suppose, where something. Unless, hold up, we could go over to. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> we go over to Clive's uh, room and see if there's like a letter somebody's written in but yeah it looks like it's all mostly side quests related it's either going to be from the hunts or it looks like two actual side quests so that's the only place i'm getting ori calcum from actually sounds like you of course haven't played any final fantasy games definitely always gameplay first like very few game stories yeah and with me, I wasn't terribly into it at first. Like I said, it was very derivative. And it took me a while before I actually started really getting into this game. I'm usually someone that likes gameplay first. And now, that being said, I do like it, you know, if it has a story in hand. I, I will definitely stick to a game a little bit longer if there's like an actual, you know, decently written story to kind of bring me in and motivate me to actually complete the thing. If it's, if it's just gameplay, I get bored very quick. 
Um, even if you add in new gameplay mechanics every now and again, it's like sometimes it's not enough. It really just depends on the game. Now, I will say that the gameplay in this game is very fun. I do like the combat quite a bit. It's not as meticulous as Devil May Cry. A lot of people compare it to that, and it's definitely... You can see why, uh, but it's sort of like a streamlined version of a, an action game, like a Devil May Cry. It's, it's pretty fun. I think if the gameplay wasn't as good as it is, and this just ended up being, like, let's say, a pretty basic turn-based game, I don't think I'd be having as much fun with it. What the hell happened here? I dare not think. A stroke of good fortune, perhaps? I hope you're right. So do I. Streets of Madness. It'd be pretty boring as turn-based. It might be. Like I said, if it was if it was more just like your basic run-of-the-mill turn-based combat, like if this, I, I, I've equated it to uh, One Piece Odyssey, which. I love One Piece and the characters, and it does the characters very well. The story is not great in that game, and the combat and gameplay mechanics are very, very basic. And I couldn't hang with that game. It just got a little bit too dry for me. And, you know, it's going to require something extra special for me to actually go back and finish it. But with this one... The story started picking up about 10 hours in. And I know it's a meme at, at some point. Bro, just play for 20 hours. It gets good. But it's actually the case where I feel like the story actually got a lot better once you got most of the setup stuff out of the way. What's up, Pre-Law? Um, but the gameplay has been solid enough where, you know, I, I love the boss battles in this game. They're absolutely fantastic. And even just doing the hunts and you know I'm not big on grinding the basic enemies in this game but just playing through it has kept me engaged long enough or even where some of the story bits can sometimes drag the gameplay picks it up is that a behemoth? that's a behemoth Okay. I'd be mad enough to tame such a beast. It in fact was a behemoth. When I first saw Ifrit in this game, I thought it might be a behemoth, but it's not a summon, so. No, oh, good. Stand back. Everything else crumbles around them, it's probably not going to hold up too well. Unless he could fly with that thing. Here it comes. Nice. Usually when you start fighting behemoth type enemies, also signifies kind of towards the end of the game as well. I only remember behemoths that, like, Kind of the latter end of most Final Fantasy games. Also usually fine with just gameplay though. You do prefer at least some theming in New Game Plus Plus. If you're platforming as it gets. Uh, Spite and Love stuff like Meat Boy and Celeste. You can never play New Game Plus Plus for more than like an hour. Not even that it was bad. Just would do like four levels and want to do something else. Yeah, I need something. Like, a lot of indie games are very, very gameplay-focused, and I can appreciate that for a bit, but... Like, the gameplay has to be pretty damn good if I'm gonna actually, you know, sit down and play it for several hours. That, if, if it doesn't have any sort of story, it has to have something else engaging, like level design, or, you know, some sort of visual characteristic that mixes the game up a bit. It's gotta have something that brings some sort of variety to the table. 
And for a decent story in a game, holy shit. <laughs> that's one of the more simple, basic things that a game developer can do. And that's what I could personally find engaging more often than not. It's just having some sort of story. You know, it doesn't have to be great or anything, but it, you know, if it could be at least the slightest bit engaging, that will keep me playing. Even if I get somewhat bored of the gameplay. Get you down here. Come on, Clive. Not actually the one I wanted, but hey. Under. Describe it to me, because uh, the name sounds familiar. I know I've never played it. I don't think I have anyway. Actually, Giga Flare is going to take a sec. Maybe I can pull it up. If I can see the cover, then I can at least know what it is. It's on Steam. Not that much. Ecliptic Meteor. Oh boy. Steve. I've definitely seen going under at some point. Desperate times. Clive, no. Trust me. I know she does, remember. But I don't know too much about it. seem quite as bad but it seems pretty when not we great fight, we fight together hey what's going on mythical good to see you uh, see don't need no white material or anything for that I said, could have been a lot worse. All right, how far is this health bar down? Eh, like a third. All right, at least it's not like a quarter or anything. I would have been upset if it was <laughs> if it was any less than that. Also, roguelike game themed around working for your internship by killing failed company startups. <laughs> and it's got decent gameplay and replay replayability. Bring it up because gameplay is good, but nothing special. Uh, but the simple theming adds enough humor to make it far more enjoyable than it otherwise would be. Oh, not too bad. It's, uh, fortunately, it's, it's been cooling down a little bit. I've been taking it. What the hell's going on here? What is this dust cloud? Uh, streaming in the mornings, just because it's been so hot in the afternoon and at night. So, I think most of the regular people that typically catch my streams have not been able to catch it thus far. 
but it's cooler today than it has been like just a bit so we're doing a sort of a clean stream but can't complain too much let's take a look at the going under game though it might be something i'd be interested in getting maybe next time a big sale rolls around i'll take a look at it Wrong one. Well, when he charges at you, he really puts his full body into it. I got his health bar about halfway down. That's good. No, not with big battles like this. It's not really comparable to DMC. It, like I said, it's got some similarities to character action games. I do think the dodging in particular kind of reminds me of Bayonetta. And there are not really combos or anything, but some of the abilities and such that you can unlock, it does uh, have a sort of characteristic of those types of character action games. I guess it is a little bit more like Bayonetta, considering the dodging mechanic and the blocking as well. It is also very hard to focus on sometimes, so it is not visually very clean. There's a lot going on. That Giga Flare out, what are you doing? It did a little bit more damage that time, thankfully. Yeah, a little, a little bit of Monster Hunter with the bigger type enemies and, you know, kind of the way the evasion works for most of their moves and stuff. Got similar attributes. You should have seen the King Barnabas boss fight for the last stream. I didn't think it was going to be similar to, uh, oh god, <coughs> DMC in regards to just how some of those bosses, some of the more of the gameplay elements work. Probably going to be that boss battle in particular. And once you get into, like, the icon fights, uh, it becomes a little bit more Godzilla-ish. <laughs> it's not really any resemblance to any sort of action game I've ever played. But... It's been interesting. The Hammer the Shackle. Well, it certainly hasn't stopped the kings and emperors throughout history from trying to even attempt to tame Bahamas. has invariably ended in tragic failure. Or rather, it had until the Kingdom of Alud discovered a means to influence the beast's primitive mind in the form of an enhanced shackle, or enchanted shackle, that presumably works similarly to crystal fetters, but without impeding ethereal channeling. Quickly, before we're cut off for good. If it is like the others, the entrance to the inner sanctum will be at the foot of the crystal. We're almost there. Almost, but not exactly. That's so cool. Your apartment when you leave for work, as soon as you get off uh, work and get home, it's like goddamn sauna. <laughs> yeah, especially if I leave the, uh, uh, the door to my room in particular, the stream from closed. Um, and sometimes I have to just because of, you know, the soundproofing and everything during a stream. It just gets so damn hot. I'm sure if I had a thermostat, like in this area in particular, it'd probably be registering in the high 90s because it gets 
pretty bad. <laughs> but I don't know. They said the heat waves expect to continue down here. So we had some record breaking temperatures. It was like a nine day streak of 100 plus temperatures, which doesn't usually happen. It's been pretty miserable. Oh, Torgal? Yeah, Torgal's great. It's a staple game mechanic. Let's play Cave Story for the first time. Cave Story is a decent game. In my mind, it was one of those first, like, big indie games. Like, one of the first indie games that got pretty big, where a lot of people started playing it. That and, like, Fez. Also, in regards to the numbers, I gotta say the numbers in this game are pretty damn useless. <laughs> you got a better a better sword, it's gonna deal more damage. But otherwise, sort of useless with the scaling that goes on in this game. Everything feels just about the same. Unless you backtrack to a real early area. It's not going to be much difference in how fast enemies fall. Wasn't the hottest day ever recorded this year, so I've been seeing that all over the place. I don't know if there was... Oh, you know what? I think in, uh, in, Death, in Death Valley, California, I think probably had the record for the hottest day. But a lot of individual cities... I've been seeing popping up all all over the place. Like hottest day for X City. I've been seeing it a lot in Texas, Arizona, California. How do we get through that? Um, but I think I think you're right. I think it was Death Valley. I remember this seeing a news article pop up for. Or it was the hottest day ever on record. So something's going on. Some miserable environmental effect. I'm sure. Will of Ice Rhyme. I don't think it's an ability to use. I think you read the title for two seconds. Oh, neat. Don't really care, so I didn't click on it. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. I tend to gather information from the headline anyway. Don't always need the specifics. Calm down, Joshua. It's just a dog. I can bust out the Mega Flare Death Beam. Open door up there, but I guess I can't get in. Actually, what about this? Up. Oh. Two steps are destroyed. We can't hop up there. There's a ship out in the distance, presumably a port. I wonder if the Enterprise can get in. I'm still exploring, thank you. I need to trigger a battle. Oh shit. Good lord. Hold up, everybody line up for a second. You know what? I'm sick of you mages and your shields. Oh, 
Blink Cave story. It feels like the Flash game that had larger than zero dollars budget. Liked it and appreciated the ambition. Tried to tell a real story. Back for true and got real mad. <laughs> I don't think I've ever played it more than just a one time. I've never tried to get anything additional out of it. I've seen plenty of people stream it. Like I said, that was one of the first like indie games that got really, really big. So there was a lot of people back in the day <clears throat> that um, you know, always made a big deal about it. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a, like, a first of its kind in a sense. So by today's standards, I'm sure it feels quaint, but independently making games was not as lucrative back then as it is today. I don't remember exactly how many people worked on that, but I'm sure it was an incredibly small team that had an inkling of an idea of what they were doing. But not nearly as polished as a lot of people nowadays. What else is this bastard laughing for? Come on. It's like I'm sure we could hop over that thing. We just kind of come around full circle before we sort of backtrack to begin with. Just as well. I'd rather not miss anything. Not what I was expecting. Orcs? No one ever suspects orcs. However that works. Oh. You must fire those things out fast. Save a little bit of my limit break. That's a decent game. It's not a chore to play, at least. Back real short helps too. Nothing else feels uh, like a game you can learn a lot of lessons from, both positive and negative. Trend sucks though. It's just way too far. I don't even remember what you need to do. I remember there was a way you could play through the game, or maybe that was like a weird mod or something. I don't know. There's like a way you could play the game where there was just like no conflict whatsoever, there's no enemies, nothing happening. You just walk through it. But I don't remember if that was like added to the game or what. There was a, a DS version of that game, which apparently everybody hated. I think I think more so for the visuals, but there might have been some problems with the soundtrack too. I don't really remember. But that game's sort of become a bit of a rarity these days. I don't remember if any of the game modes I was describing were part of that particular version either. But, like I said, I've only ever played it the one time, so... I don't even really remember it that well. Once we step onto that bridge, we'll be easy targets. 
Then we better move we quickly. We should fly over it. You ever think of that, huh? A lot easier than I was expecting it to be. Four of ultimate trolls. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? Oh shit. You stay away from me. I need to hear these things that do the buffs. Joshua, when did you get in there? Mm, stay away from that. No idea what that is. Trend requires you to restart the game and do very specific tests you would never do if you didn't know you had to. The real problem is that the final secret section is a brutal five minute gauntlet, tons of enemies, and skill spikes. Into the final boss, no save point. While well, the screen constantly shakes. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, I definitely never did that myself. I might have seen a streamer do that. Um, doesn't sound fun though. Also back then, a lot of indie games were taking like the Kaizo mindset from a lot of mods for existing games, so especially if it was anything platformer related. It's like they wanted there to be like an extra little section that was the extra challenging. I don't see any other way. I am not a fan of platformers in general. Sometimes, you know, there's some games that kind of turn my interest or if there's something that gets enough buzz or you know whatever then i will look into it and play it but platformers definitely aren't a go-to for me uh, so especially when there's something that's super difficult like that there ain't no chance in hell i'm gonna be wasting hours of my life trying to navigate the little minutia in order to successfully beat it it's not something i consider fun I don't like general platforming in general. I don't consider that much fun. But, especially if there's like very finite jumps that you have to do, other stuff along those lines. Sure, it's somewhat satisfying when you finally get it completed, but it's not worth it for me. crafting material. It's like a bunch of stuff that I've already gotten so much of Enough to begin of with. from the bridge. Maybe it's just a bit roundabout. Still wondering about that ship. Wonder if maybe it'll come into play. Hmm, an Akashic curl. I've already fought one of these earlier today. Is that it? Is it just the one? Oh 
like platformers a lot, but long sections are not fun. I need to kill you so far into a section with no save point. I'm kind of the same way I feel about boss runs and Souls games. They're fair and challenged, but they better be under two minutes or so. Yeah, I get sick of that with Souls games in particular, when they have like three or four different phases. It starts to piss me off after a while. Sometimes I end up giving up on them, because it's like if I can't beat a boss quickly, or if I have to attempt it more than like five times, then I just get kind of done. I'm like, eh, I could be doing something else. Although, if you consider it a platformer, I will say something like uh, Tomb Raider, which I guess some might consider a 3D platformer, I enjoy quite a bit. But, Tomb Raider's controls are so meticulous, and it's not really like seat of your pants level platforming where you have to make a lot of jumps on the fly. Sometimes they get like that, but it's never too terrible. It's not nearly as hard as that Mark curl that we fought earlier. It's a bit refreshing. We've been plowing through these enemies. But I think that's the Tomb Raider, classic Tomb Raider is the only instance of any degree of platforming that I enjoy. I think that has more to do with the controls than anything. 2D platformers though. Yeah. So I've never gotten into stuff like Mario. A lot of my friends, oh, you're not a Mario fan? You don't have the Mario games? Nah. Got the uh, first time I got a Super Nintendo, I got the Super Mario All-Stars collection. It's like five Mario games on a single cartridge. I did not enjoy a single one of them. I knew from that day I ate forward <laughs> that it would always be the case. Things are doing, but keep me out of it. I don't even know why I bother looking in these areas. We've already established several times over that we have battle areas like this. Not gonna give you a whole lot of drops. There are so many. Focus I'll take care of it, maybe. Past me. I don't know, I'm over here. You want to fight me? Uh, the round being so long is what kills you. you. Like fighting bosses for hours. You fought DMC boss for seven hours, but got sick of the secret Bayo boss after three. Because uh, it wastes your time with cutscenes every time you fail, which just isn't necessary for a boss. 99% of, of players are going to fight as your time being wasted on spectacle. Why can't you just restart the fight? Yeah. Well, unskippable cutscenes are definitely a design flaw. <laughs> I don't mind a cutscene. I don't mind a cutscene in a battle. I don't mind a cutscene before, like proceeding, or after. You want to have some setup, or you know, some build up, or 
prefers some sort of finish that can't be done via gameplay. It's perfectly understandable by my means. I get it, and I, in some, a, lot of, a lot of ways I like it. I like there being a little additional something, a little visual flair. But um, if it's something that you're expected to retry over and over again, especially when it's something that's going to be a little on the harder side, when you can't actually skip anything, that's, that's kind of shitty. Been a couple times with this game. I've not been terrible at this game, so I've been able to get through most of the fights without issue, but every once in a while, I have to restart a boss battle or something, there's a cutscene that precedes it, and you just press the option button, and skip, and you're good to go. They did not make the cutscenes mandatory. The hell are you? Sound a little frustrated, Clive. So I'm not locked onto this guy, that's probably not a good thing. I don't like fighting one of these enemy types. I certainly don't want to fight two. Hopefully you'll be distracted with Joshua over there. Try to take care of this one. Ah, oh, shit. It's that warping ability that gets on my nerves. Down you go. Okay, fortunately their defense and or health is nothing too egregious, so... Certainly manageable. Ugh! Again with the flamethrower breath, I hate that shit. It's skippable, but it's three separate ones in between going to the shopping menu for purchasing items and the bottom menu, so it takes 45 seconds despite you not actually doing anything for the entire time. Just enter the shop and buy the item. Oh shit, the ability has not recovered yet. Well, I kind of get that, but at least the, you know, skipping option is there. There we go. Suck it, son! That's all we need for that one. Yeah! Flamethrower breath again. Ah, you got me. At least I blocked it and was able to dodge after the fact. Been a lot worse. Yeah, it didn't work out for you, huh? Hey, you bastard. so whiny about it. They're just wraiths and osprayers. Oh, you bastard. You interrupted my combo. Hold up. 
Time to use the charge. Ugh. Little mages are getting gutsy. the entire McDonald's menu, huh? In one sitting, or...? <laughs> Kashyyyk Warlord. Still got the little guys around here. Jesus, no. Flare lasts a while. You lose. <laughs> Fine way to end it. <sighs> All right. Unusual items for all that. How about a breather, lads? There's no end to them. The whole bloody army's here. Stand back, Joshua. I'm summoning a freight. Stop, Clive. You mustn't. We still have a long way to go. If you tap your strength here, you'll have none left to destroy the heart. Then you'd rather die? Was it the Enterprise? How'd they know where we were? Jill. All right. I guess she can uh, sense that. <laughs> you lose. Killed like eight hundred of us. There's still more. Oh, she's not alone. Get that classic Final Fantasy theme in there. to see us how did you gav he told us exactly where you'd be even sniffed out a crack in the castle wall and when we saw the heavens come crashing down we had no choice but to believe him <laughs> it's been quite a day <laughs> so what do we owe this honor a debt i would see repaid prince dion 
It's good to see you well. So, this must be Ifrit. Your uncle bade me give you a message. Listen to your heart. It will guide your steel true. Your father would expect no less. That is all. Thank you. For everything. Your Highness. Dion, please. You do realize the only thing we've freed so far is this wall from its foundations, right? Now, if your lord and ladyship's uh, quite finished. <laughs> well said, Gaff. We have work to do. Lots of work indeed. Alright. Everybody's all gathered up. <laughs> That while we were fighting the legions. Sometimes it's like a week or two goes by without anyone using any of the sound bites, and I forget it's there. It's startling. But don't suppose there's how I can say to make you change your mind. So I'll just tell you to stay safe. Man won't take kindly to losing the best customer, especially after letting us carry all this stuff all the way to Ash. And we wouldn't want to anger old Nan. You mean, you'll buy some of offers? The only thing that worries me is that, well, there could be an additional... Uh, we'll see. I've got some good Let's stuff for you. see what we got. Because I don't want to, like, step out of this area and then have to redo all that crap, because that's what I had to do last time when we... We're about to fight Bahamut. That, that shit sucked. So I wasn't too keen Thank you. on quitting halfway uh, through no an area need? just to see if there was like some new stuff that cropped up in terms of You've got everything you need, then. side quests or whatever. Anything else I can make for you? There isn't an obelisk here, so we definitely can't warp to this point. What do you have to say? I couldn't have made it this far without you, Torgal. If Sid were here today, I reckon he'd be proud of you, Clive. He'd be proud of us all. There is still much I would learn of your tale. Like too cool for Once school, leaning up against the wall here. Until then. All who might come between me and such knowledge shall answer to my spear. I do not envy them. This looks like you could walk right up to the Enterprise, but I guess not. <laughs> Somebody's talking up there, I guess. Each parting brings the hope of reunion. I missed you, Clive. I missed you too. Yeah, everybody missed each other. You see, Clive, we're not alone. If we are to win the day, we must all play our part. And ours. Ours lies beyond those doors. At once. We fought long and hard for this moment. Sid's dream, our dream, is within our grasp. We need only endure this final trial, and we shall, together. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the end of the world, boy? Bark, bark. Such wisdom, yes. <laughs> Truly insightful. We need we opinions from is, every creature. It awaits us beyond this gate. And we shall face it together. Together. I. What if they can't get the door open? Oh no, the behemoth. Oh, there's multiple behemoths. I thought it was the one we just fought. 
I was like, it's turned to caching. But no, it's just another one. I will stay them. We will stay them. Go! Just don't keep us waiting. Thank you. Say, better get in here. I'm not gonna miss out on a game mechanic. Joshua! Joshua! Wake up! Okay, we just got teleported. Clive, is that you? This... This isn't stone here. It's awful dark. Welcome to our darkness. Uh, well, that would explain the it then. Rift between worlds wherein your kind might reflect. Show yourself! Grave and many are the sins of man. And we would have you know them. All of them. All of As them. fate has seen fit to deliver you home, consider this our welcoming gift. Hmm. It would seem we are trapped. And the only way out is through Ultima. We find him and we leave. Is that all then? We're just gonna find him and then we'll be allowed to leave. Oh, gotcha. It's like, where's Waldo? Yeah, thank you, Joshua. I'm assuming that uh, Clive didn't summon a fireball. I don't think he yet has that ability. Although I gotta say, it's one of those issues where the uh, source of light is so bright it uh, almost blinds you compared to how dark it is around you. We must go back to the beginning. To the beginning. When the world was still young. Oh good, we're getting a history we lesson. We visited upon it a miracle, magic, and in its light did all life flourish. for this boon would prove heavy. A pall descended upon the land, painting the horizon black as night. Though we labored to forestall its spread, in this one endeavor, we stood powerless. And so we fled, that we might endure, endure, that we might discover 
a means of salvation. But if it was magic that caused the blight, what of the Mother Crystals? I expect he'll tell us soon enough. History lesson time, don't fall asleep where I get the ruler. <laughs> that or cast some sort of world ending magic, I'm sure. Now, can we really trust his side of history, though? I don't know if it's going to be 100% accurate. Bestowed the magic upon them, so its use of it just messed up everything. Shouldn't have given it in the first place. Maybe magic isn't all it's cracked up to be. Honestly, though, that's kind of been the issue from the beginning. They've said, you know, the, the magic steals the aether, the energy of the world, speeding up the blight. So. Just stop using magic. To forge a new world. Easier said than done, I know. require not yeah. only power, but a constitution strong enough to wield it. Acquiring the first would be simple. Untouched by the blight, Valisthea was replete with ether, and we had only to place jewels in her crown to claim it. Acquiring the second, however, demanded creativity. And so I cast forth the seeds of humanity. You created us. Is that not what gods do? We sowed the seeds for you, Muthos, all that you might one day blossom. And our future thus secured, we thought to slumber, though that would prove a grave mistake. For it was as we slept that man committed his greatest sin. He awoke. Alone in a world bereft of his God's radiance, he stumbled blindly, desperate for guidance. 
finding no light, he sought to kindle his own. And from that single errant impulse was his will born. Having discovered himself at last, man turned his eyes inward and found he desired evermore that which only magic might afford. So wars were waged and brothers slain for custody over that dwindling resource and the land she wept tears of black. Stop using mag magic. It's just like, stop using fossil fuels. Well, the thing is, you could equate it to that, sure, but in this particular world, it does not have the same effect. They use magic in battles and fighting and stuff, so, you know, they're just talking about wars. So, as a means, as a weapon. But this world does not use magic to any large degree. They use it in their everyday lives, but it's not anything that, like, couldn't be achieved elsewise because it's all been, like, stupid stuff they've been using magic for. I think that's more of a flaw of the world building, but it's like, you know, they use it to, to cool their drinks or to, to uh, do topiary. <laughs> At the beginning of the game, you see, like, people cutting up the bushes with magic. So it's like, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Anything else? It's not like they're using it to as a power source for anything, or <laughs> it's all like for very menial tasks outside of just you know the actual like fighting. It's for this, surely he cannot be so blind to his own hypocrisy. Not blind, just unwilling to admit the truth. Though we are one and the same, but otherwise. Everybody in this world just, you know, is fairly backward. It's all medieval, except for they have magic to alleviate just the most minor of tasks. I mean, th we ha there hasn't even been an airship. They put, uh, like, steam engines on a regular ship, and that was like a big thing. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, I don't think there's anything down there. Almost looked like there was going to be a split path, but I don't think there's going to be any pickups here, and I don't think they're going to veer off the beaten path too much. Is that... the freed, or what's left of him? Long have our ashes lain cold for want of a spark. Cast your eyes upon them and see what you must become. <sighs> Valisthea cannot endure a second claim upon her being. The avarice of man drives her ever closer to destruction. But she may yet be saved by you. It is what you were born to do. Why we nursed you and fed you as your own mother should have. And now that you are fully grown, our Muthos, it is time at last for you to serve your purpose. To right your wrongs. That's what I gathered from it. We could maybe pull up the time lore. Uh, pull up the time lore to see if this spells it out in text for us. What is the interdimensional rift? Place beyond space and time turned both the rift between worlds and our darkness by its creator, Ultima. Clive and Joshua were forcibly summoned here by the mad deity that they might reflect upon their transgressions. Ultima, otherwise uh, otherworldly being behind much of the tragedy and turmoil that has plagued Balistia and the creature of uh, King Barnabas of Walud worships as his god. 
Ultima requires a vessel in which to inculcate his disembodied soul. And Clive's curious ability to absorb the powers of other icons suggests that he is the very muthos, as I call it, and it looks like mythos, that Ultima has long awaited. He wills Clive to absorb the other icons that vessel that his vessel might be perfected. Which is kind of what the game's sort of been building up to all this time. Alistia is a realm comprising the twin continents of Storm and Ash, over which the Mother Crystals once stood vigil. Countless aeons ago, Ultima arrived here, fleeing the blight that devoured his homeland, and resolved to rebuild the world to usher in a new and final age of pure reason. It was he who placed the Mother Crystals in each corner of the land that they might harvest the Aether he needed to achieve his end. The Muthos. Ultima's name for his vessel of limitless power that he has long awaited. He identifies Clive as his Muthos by virtue of his awakening as the dominant of Ifrit and having the power to absorb the Aether of other icons. Ultima manipulates his servants to pitting Clive against the other dominants that he might drink of their strength and bring Muthos closer to perfection. And finally, Aether. The life force of the land and source of all magic. The amount of Aether a spell consumes depends on its strength, with those manifesting more potent forces over a wider area coming at a greater cost. Larger crystals can channel more Aether than smaller ones, and thus can be used to cast more powerful magics. One might use a small ration shard to grill a fish, but would require a large municipal crystal to fire a blacksmith's forge. So, that might bring us up to speed with the lore that's going on. If our sin is wanting to survive, then you are as marked by it as we are. The fault is yours. <laughs> Doesn't look like he has a rebuttal for that. Born because you abandoned us. And now, you would have us forfeit them. All for a place in your new paradise. But yeah, basically, history repeats itself. Do you imagine yourselves worthy of one? Seems to be what we're getting at. Mankind has no place in our world. Is this truly so difficult to comprehend? We only ever require you, Muthos, when the time comes to bid this wretched realm farewell. None shall follow, none shall remain. What do you mean, none? This is our world. Once the land's rebirth is complete, humanity will have served its purpose. Why would we continue to suffer that which has caused us so much vexation? Because the land doesn't belong to you. It belongs to us all! That is where you are mistaken. Belongs to me. You are nothing but your precious will. Brother. I can't do this alone. And you don't have to. I grow weary of your descent. Now you must learn that this master will not tolerate disobedience. Okay, I wasn't expecting that form. It's a little weird. My friends. My family. We have all suffered. All fought to survive. This world may be flawed. It may be broken. But it's all we have. And if we can't share it, I see only one other choice. You have to go. You may have created us, Ultima. But it's time we lived on our own terms. 
This isn't your world anymore. It's us. Bow down, Avengers. Hearts disdained. Probably should have dodged a little earlier. Something outside of uh, the behemoth, I don't think we've fought in a new enemy type yet outside of this day, so. Might be some uh, growing pains learning his move set, so we shall see. Ah, popped it up behind him. Honestly, the weirdest part is that he listened to you at all, since his argument is you should not have will and be a mindless tool. Well, that's what he's saying should be happening, but he does acknowledge that they do have a will of their own. And throughout, I would say most of the latter half of this game, he's been he's been commenting on the, the will of the people and, you know, in order to uh, meet his goal, he needs to break that will. So it shouldn't be there, according to him, but it is. And it needs to go. Oof. Dodged right into it. noise for him to make. It sounds like an oxymoron. Is penance paid? Oh, wretched mortals incapable even of contrition. Event horizon. Season, shall we reap our of course, it's another gravity based thing. Ugh. Wrong icon. I need to tighten up.
Oh shit. I don't think I took any damage from that, surprisingly, but still. Chicken nuggets didn't come with any sauce. The sound of whining disappointment. Yeah, let's get away from that event horizon, shall we? Oh man. It's nothing about stun lock. That's like stun lock the move. of his moves have like a backup failsafe move just in case one doesn't go through. And it sucks because the dodge period between some of them. Ah, doesn't give me a hell of a whole lot of time to recover. this chance and still you would raise your hand against the Lord what now the darkness bends he means to end us it wouldn't be the first time kind of figured that all along to be Let's quite honest his last your faith is in Surrender the vessel unto the darkness. Surrender it unto us. Ooh. Oh no. Okay, that wasn't good. I'm gonna bust out the... Let's see, what can we do here? Maybe a little stone skin? so cool I only talk in sentences as if they were Bible verses. Uh, he certainly has a God complex, whether or not he, whether or not he is, uh, has a right to that, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, he's, uh, these moves are kind of messing me up a little bit. And again, this one's kind of shitty after he does the little laser thing. Laser light show, which has got this additional attacks now.
do a follow-up for the third time, huh? It's a little unusual. Skin tonic is a worn out. Apply another one. Actually, didn't like mean to use that last high potion. Hold up. No, oh, not again. Oops, sucks. Dodged most of it. I don't know if I got the full effect of that Ice Age in there. Otherwise, I might have had it. That's the end of it, but still. At least we're done with that battle. Level up, maybe? Oh, good. Not quite at 50. <sighs> Starting to get down on the potions a little bit, so... I was getting a little worried. Besides, I had uh, accidentally used one of my high potions, so... Might be screwed if we have any follow-up battles immediately after this one. Thank you. We shall see. What is this? Pull of darkness. Dancing steel. Increase rate at which dancing steel fills a Zentatsukin gauge by 25%. Apparently that Zentatsukin is supposed to be a hell of a move. Just been hesitant about getting it since it costs so much. At last. For countless generations have we awaited this moment. Your struggles have made you strong. 
Yet your soul remains heavy with sin. How did you know? Absolution is nigh. Repent, and all shall be forgiven. I know, Clive. Might be your chance. Do what he says. Wait a second. I think everybody was. <laughs> Why is... Well, okay. They're all each individual characters, but there's two of Jill for some reason. casually having a conversation with her past self. Tell me, Clive. How many lives have you saved since taking my name? Fewer than we have ruined. Wherever we go, we leave a sea of tears in our wake. These... These are the wages of your will, son. What good are our choices when all they ever bring, all they will ever bring, is death? There's no atoning, Clive. No matter how hard you try. So why not leave it all behind? Wait, Joshua hasn't spoken. I want to hear his words leave on this matter. Behind. Clive! <laughs> He might have been convinced if, if Torgal had spoken up. Please. Be like in a Scooby Doo voice. Won't anybody love me? No. I learn, yet still she is not mine. Have I not given enough? From will is born desire, and it is this which consumes you, rendering you incomplete. Do you not see how the world bends and warps under the weight of your hungering hearts? What if it could all just go away? Just... <laughs> really would have tied the whole thing together, yeah. Maybe so. This is real. Wake up. It's time to go home, Clive. Clive. Yeah, that's you, buddy. That's right. You're my brother. Brother. Phoenix Feather bringing him back. Come. Remember who you are. Clive.
once more, lest you forget. <laughs> I gotta say it one more time. <laughs> Clive! My name is Clive. There you go. Clive Rossfield. Look, Ultima. Even here, the light of the vessel's will cannot be quenched. And the phoenix, his trespass should not have been possible. Not possible unless... Unless he has been with Muthos all along. The mark of the phoenix emblazoned upon his heart, made manifest by the power of will alone. The power of creation. Can it be? Are there wills? Truly so potent. Or potent, enunciated He's quite as still precisely as that. <sighs> Alright, finally. We haven't had any icon summoning in quite some time. Even with the last battle when we did Barnabas, it was like two seconds and then like might as well put it in. <laughs> Angry with Clive. Time for Ultima to shut up now. <laughs> cry or a cry of pain. Oh. Whatever they hit, unless it was Ultima himself, they must have hit the heart of the Mother Crystal. about in the halls of origin does our true power quicken and there shall you be made complete soon mythos soon you will discover yeah, I should have known how little you know of suffering the final mother crystal is not going to be the final location of the game Still got this halls of origin, apparently. Oh yeah, there was that spire at Twinside. And so the crystals are no more. Yet in their silence, a new song rings. It's chorus building 
a crescendo as it enters its final movement, stirring those long aslumber to waking. And back to their origin. <laughs> Race logos, the golden arches of M. I cannot save you from me. <laughs> this creates a giant yellow sign in the air. It's not over yet. of a new McDonald's in the realm. I don't know, he just lifted the whole land up in the air. Oh, dang. When it started floating, I thought, oh, maybe this is where we get our airship. But no, it looks like there's a spire or something. Or maybe not, I don't know. Honestly, I guess in the last Final Fantasy game, too, they gypped us on the airship as well. You don't get it until, like, post-game. Like, a New Game Plus stuff. Bloody crystals cracked. So where the hell are they? Anybody look in the air? Oh, fuck me. Is that... Ether? What in good Grieger's name is going on? This is wrong. If you really want to destroy, you could drop that big rock. You just lift it, probably all die. <laughs> True, although I, I will say, I don't think destruction is the goal. I think it's more of a takeover type thing. The humanity has been enslaved by him via the Akashic. So like those guys that look like they're covered in ash. I think that's kind of more his goal for the remainder of humanity. Everybody would just be turned into zombies. Fall back to the ship. But he specifically wants to take over Clive because Clive has that ability to absorb other icon abilities. I will be with you in no summon abilities. Thank you. Well, you're the only one of us that can fly, really. Well, maybe Jill can. Assuming he can still transform. I don't know if destroying the last of the Mother Crystals has any effect on summons. stick around as long as I thought he might. Alright, back to the hideaway. <laughs> oh, don't mind the giant crystal that's just hovering in midair. You can't get to it anyway. Well, maybe this is where the last of the hunts come in. So mayhaps we can get that uh, tell everyone what happened to Drake's spine. final weapon. And I'm going to need Otto's help. There's something about it. This hole, it was meant for me. Still alive, I see. Something tells me that I saw on the horizon is your doing. How'd you manage that? It's a long story. One that I'd rather only tell once. Right. All hands on deck, then. Oh good, are we all going to the mead hall again? I mean, most of these people are already there. I don't think we really need to explain it. As I'm sure you've all guessed, 
The crystal which now commands the eastern skies was summoned by Ultima. He called it Origin. Though the significance of that name is as yet unclear. What does it matter what it's called? Its emergence tore Twinside asunder and wiped my homeland from the map. <laughs> Pissed off God and he told me to become brain dead. <laughs> we could really boil it down to that, yeah. Mention of the Dominion Spires can be found in the oldest of Valisthian records. But to the best of my knowledge, none provide any hint as to their true nature. That they would prove the horns of some slumbering demon. Well... The Dominion's demise was at least quick. Elsewhere, the Republican army cannot hope to contain the chaos engulfing Randalar. Canva is in flames, and the Empire... Our allies are crying out for answers. I've sent the curse breakers to give them what assurances we can, but right now that amounts to fuck all. They wouldn't be able to stop what the skies have started in any case. People here and across the realm grow sicker with every passing day. Could it be that this new mother crystal is like the others? That it draws upon the land's ether? It certainly looked that way from stone here. If that were true, it would explain the hastening spread of the blight since the crystal's appearance, would it not? And as the land's ether slowly rises to the surface, it pulls, corrupting all who cannot channel its energies. Arche above, ether floods below, and in the middle, here we languish, hopelessly entrapped. <laughs> we got down for a second. Oh, it's all right. It's really that bad, huh? When we faced him at Stone here, Ultima told us his true power quickens in the halls of origin. Needless to say, we cannot allow that to continue. If we are to stop him, we will have to find a way into the crystal. How are we going to manage that then? It's up in the sky. And fast as she is, the Enterprise can't fly. It's not the Enterprise I know. It's a lot to take in. And I reckon we'd all benefit from some time to clear our heads. The answer will come to us. Don't you worry. Ain't that right, Clive? Right. That's right. Well, go on, then. Bugger off. Same goes for you, Clive. You won't solve anything like this. Trust me. Go and get some fresh air, right? Eh? Thank you. I wonder if they're gonna make me do some, like, meaningless side quests before we get upset. into something. Although, from the looks of it, oh boy. Let's, let's see what he has to say. I'm starting to get worried that we might have missed out on a side quest, though. If that's the case, then I'm not getting that additional material, which means I'm not getting that final sword. Ultima may have created us, but he doesn't make us who we are. Only we can do that. And if he would have us fight for our survival, so be it. It's what we've been doing all along. Much like Ultima himself, it would seem. His new world being naught but a means to survive. And so, we must contend to decide which of us shall inherit the land. Should Ultima prevail, it will mean death for us all. Of that, we can be certain. But even should he fail, what world awaits us? A 
withered, godless place where our newfound freedom will most like prove a chain in itself. Well, there may be, but a chain can always be broken. As long as one has the will to break it, it won't be easy. It may take generations, centuries of suffering. And that is if everyone plays their part. But it will happen. But at least we'll be free, damn it. It does. It will be on our terms. That is the world that awaits us. Well, when you put it like that, it does sound kind of shitty. And what better world could one wish for? But first, we have to reach that crystal. Then it's a good thing I have wings. You can barely stand, let alone fly. And only the founder knows what horrors await in those skies. Are you certain about this? Am I certain? I am the Phoenix. I will do what I must. This is our fight. Remember? All right. Yeah, I remember. Healed. But only what you must, yes? I'm still your sworn shield. That you are. And what of my wings? <laughs> How long were you standing there? Lest you forget, you go to stand against a god. I would not have you succumb to fatigue before the fight begins. Ifrit, your brother mentioned that some few of the dominants who had lost their power to you were still able to prime. Is that true? It is. Oh, he hasn't done it yet. But their icons no longer submitted to their will. Ah. Then mine will have to be stronger. That you both might save your strength for the battle to come. You don't have to do this. If you do, there's a chance you might lose all you have left. And what have I but regret? My life ended in the Dominion. I fear death no more. Besides, I would have words with Ultima. He has much to answer for. Yeah, you hear that up there? Coming for you. We are in your debt, Dion. We can speak of debts when this is over. I have to forget that the icons that he takes the uh, abilities from, their dominance, can't really transform into them at will. Only because they've always transformed back into the icon eventually, but it's when they go full-on rage mode. He speaks like a man, he knows he's not coming back. And has come to terms with that. That doesn't mean that we have to, does it, Kaif? Time to talk to Jill. I only hope she understands. Jill can kind of fly too, but I guess she gave her uh, icon up as well. Oh shit, she's uh, she's hanging out up in Clive's room. Gotta go around. to wish on a star. <sighs> that might not be such a bad idea. This is it, Jill. 
You know what I have to do. Why well, I have to do it. There's no turning back now. This is where our journey was leading us. Where it will end, for better or worse. I could pray to Metia for you. But you'll be all right, won't you, Clive? <laughs> we both know that's not going to do anything. I did promise we'd watch the moon together. I'll be waiting. Sure, I haven't forgotten anything. Think for origin, there is some green popping up. Oh no, they look like side quests. Quite a few of them too. None of them apparently with the. Hold on. The name of the side quest that I saw has our items that we need. Oh lord. All right, so it looks like there's another final wave of like side quests and stuff that we we uh, could potentially do. I guess there's nothing really stopping me. I'll go take a look at uh, one of our guys here. I forget his name. That mean the crystal Clive. You got, or Wait, whatever that name is. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that's in Sandbrack. So the one I have listed here is having the item that we need in order to get that final sword. The Goddammermung is under new management, too. So that's where it is. Lies in the sand, duty undying. And naturally, did any marks just pop up? Let's take a look. No. Okay. So for whatever reason, I didn't even realize that any of the marks were tied to this, but it seems like you need to fulfill certain side quests in order for certain marks to pop up. So once you do that uh, under new management one, then the mark that has, I think, either the Dark Steel or maybe an Ori Calcum or something like that, uh, whatever it is, it's got one of the items we need in order to make that final sword, so... We'll have a handful of things to do. I'm gonna go ahead and make a save here. Uh, with that being said, I don't know how long the core story is going to take. We pretty much just did core story here. I did the one side quest delivering the ring to the guy's parents' grave, and then we did one hunt. That didn't really take too long, I would say, probably. Maybe like 30 minutes, something like that. So, nothing too major, but with all the ones that have popped up so far, this is probably going to take a minute, I would, I would assume. <laughs> Let's see, because there's one, two, I think there's one for each, except for one area, I think I had two. So, one, two, count it, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, possibly more, because sometimes the reading table has has more in it than just what the icon shows. All right. Well, I think what's gonna happen here, cause I don't wanna miss out on that item. And this is one of those games where I'd rather just try to do everything in one run than have to go back. Uh, so I think I'm gonna play some of this on my own time. And uh, yeah, we can, we can see about finishing this up the next stream, maybe. It just depends on how much I get done. Sometimes these side quests, even if I'm rushing through them, end up taking a while. And we'll see. But we got through a big chunk of it today. Destroyed the last of the Mother Crystal. It was a pretty, pretty eventful stream, I must say. Uh, so, can't be too displeased with the progress we've made. But I will come back either tomorrow or the day after. Ended a little bit early here today. Uh, got some stuff I want to do anyway, so. Ends up working out. And, uh, yeah, maybe the next stream we can push to the finish, uh, provided I get all the necessary stuff I want to 
you know, try and finish up all the little extra tidbits. But so far, so good. Been happy with the progress we've been making, and definitely seems like we're close. I think once we get to that uh, origin up there, that's probably going to be the point of no return, and it's going to be end game from there on out. So exciting stuff. We've been playing this game for a minute now, a few weeks. Uh, got to finish it up, especially I think next month we got some sort of big releases. I think August. Yeah, that sounds about right. So. Gotta, gotta make way, make some room. Of course, if I end up finishing this during the next stream, we will have a little bit of room before the next big game that I'll be getting, which might be Armored Core, so I think I want to try and do some Master of Arena. Plan for some Armored Core Master of Arena off the PS1 uh, next week, probably. But for right now, we will see about finishing up Final Fantasy 16. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it as always. I think I'm just going to end it here because don't see anybody yet. No streaming outside of just some bigger channels and just some other stuff going on. So I think we'll just call it. But you guys have a good night. Always enjoy talking with a lot of you. And uh, I will be back hopefully tomorrow. We'll see about finishing this up tomorrow. But until then, take care. See you next time.